Do you want to make custom acrylic crafts? In this video, we are talking all about laser cut acrylic projects. We'll go over what laser you need and share expert tips to help you create amazing pieces. Hey there, I'm Sarah. You're watching Creative Ramblings. We share a lot of laser videos on this channel. So if you are a laser crafter or thinking about getting started with lasers, hit that subscribe button. You're going to find something here that will help you along the way. Acrylic is an amazing medium to work with. It is a type of plastic that is really hard and solid. It comes in all different forms, uh, colors, textures, styles, um, and it makes really cool decorative pieces, jewelry, home decor, all kinds of things. So before we dive into acrylic projects, let's talk about lasers. What type of laser do you need to cut acrylic? So we are gonna focus on home desktop lasers, kind of like the one behind me, those that you can have in your home, in your craft room, and you can make crafts with. You might be a small business owner, you might just do this as a hobby for fun. Most desktop home lasers are diode lasers. It might also be called a blue laser. This could be something like the Xtool M1, the Glowforge Aura, or the WeCreate Vista. These are all diode lasers, and they can cut and engrave all kinds of materials. A diode laser can do some work with acrylic, but not a lot. So if you purchase a diode laser, you're going to be able to cut and engrave opaque cast acrylic in dark colors. You're going to have trouble with lighter colors like white or yellow, and you're not going to be able to do anything with clear, glitter, patterned, or textured acrylic. It's really important to know when you're making your decision on what laser to purchase. If you want to work with all types of acrylic, you are going to want to opt for a CO2 laser. This right here is the P2S. This is from Xtool. The Glowforge Pro also falls into that category. There's a lot of other companies out there that make CO2 lasers. A CO2 laser can do everything you want to do with acrylic. The P2S is a new model launched by Xtool. If you want to take a look at it, take a look at the video up above. It's got some really cool new features, including um, an exhaust fan and air assist that have just been amplified to give you really crisp, clean projects. So where do you find acrylic to create projects with? So like I said earlier, acrylic is a hard plastic, comes in a lot of different thicknesses. I'd say the most common thickness is three millimeters, maybe two millimeters. That's somewhere between an eighth and a 16th of an inch. They come in sheets anywhere from eight and a half by 11 up to 12 by 24 inch sheets. The size of acrylic you're gonna get is gonna depend on your machine. Um, I really like using 12 by 12 in this machine, but the 12 night, 12 by 19 fit in here as well. There's a lot of places you can buy acrylic from, but I would recommend opting for a supplier that specifically deals with laser crafters. They're gonna make sure you're getting the right material for your machine. Two small businesses that sell acrylic to laser crafters are Smoky Hill and Houston Acrylics. Um, I've linked them both down in the description. You can take a look at them. Huge selection, and they've got really great communities around them too if you have questions about acrylic. You can also look on Amazon. What I would recommend doing is go into your laser group, if you're not in a laser group for your machine, I've linked the P2 one down below. They are incredibly helpful. The laser community wants to help each other and lift each other up. So if you're looking at something on Amazon, you can always go into your laser group and be like, hey, has anybody used this before? You just wanna make sure you're getting good quality products. You can also purchase acrylic from a laser manufacturer. So Xtool does have a huge selection of acrylic as well as other blanks that you can use in their machines. I really like Xtool acrylics, and I've linked some of my favorites down in the description. When you purchase acrylic, you may find some wording that talks about your sheets being masked or not masked. Masking is just a sheet of paper with an adhesive on it that is stuck to the top of your acrylic. Masking is really good because when you put it in your machine and you cut it, it's going to help you get really clean lines and prevent some burning. When you engrave through the masking or even score, you're gonna get really clean engraving too. 
Masking is also really helpful if you engrave acrylic and wanna fill it with paint. You can engrave right through the masking, then fill it in with paint, and then peel off the excess masking. If your acrylic comes to you and it has a plastic sheet on it, not paper, you need to peel that plastic off before cutting it in your machine or you're gonna get just a melty mess. So I have some acrylic that came with that plastic sheet on it, so I took that off and I added my own masking. Now you can cut and engrave acrylic without masking, that is just fine. Um, I like to put it on there because it does give me just a little bit better result. I have this big roll of masking tape that I can put on a full sheet of acrylic, or I could just cut off a small piece and put it in the corner that I'm using. After you have cut or engraved your project and you wanna pull that masking off, you can use your fingernail sometimes, you could use a little pick tool, or you can use Gorilla Tape. This is a really, really, really strong duct tape type of adhesive. And I like to cut off just a little piece and put it on the end of my piece that has masking, and then I'm able to just pull everything off. Sometimes if you're trying to pull it up with like a weeding tool or a scraping tool, you can actually scratch the acrylic. So using the Gorilla Tape is gonna prevent any scratches. Layered acrylic designs like this one that have a back piece and then all these little letters on top are really fun to create, uh, but they can be kind of tedious, especially when you're dealing with all of these little letters. So here's a couple tips for layering acrylic. When you're in your design software, for this piece right here, I created the circle on the back and then I created this little piece that says Jones Family Established 2024. I'm gonna duplicate this piece that says Jones Family and I am going to score it onto the teal color and then cut it out of the gray. Scoring it onto the bottom piece gives me kind of a, a template for where to put the letters. So I know exactly where to put the letters, they're gonna line up perfectly. Scoring works really well when you're dealing with individual letters or tiny little pieces versus just one big piece that you're laying on top of another piece. There are a couple ways to attach the top layer to the bottom layer. You can use um, specific glue that's meant for acrylic. I really, really like Gorilla Super Glue. I'm telling you, Gorilla just makes really good products, both their duct tape um, and this one too. Um, this is gonna stick really, really well. You want to make sure you have a super fine tip because if I were to glue this together and I were to get any glue outside of these letters, it's gonna show up, especially on glossy acrylic. You're gonna see that leftover glue and it's not gonna look very professional. My favorite way to layer acrylic pieces is to actually add the adhesive before you cut it. And you can do that with a really specific project. This is a 3M adhesive tape and it's double sided. So if I pull it up here, it's really, really thin. It's sticky on the back and you can take this and apply it to the back of your acrylic. So if you have masking, pull that masking off first. You don't have to pull it off for the whole piece, just the little corner that you're working on and apply the tape. Then make sure that it's tape side down in your machine and cut from the front. Then when you wanna layer them, you just pull off the backing from the tape and you have an ad adhesive already there. It's cut with the acrylic. You can just put it on the back layer and it's gonna stick really well. This stuff is strong. It doesn't move around. When you are using super glue to attach your pieces, you might have a little bit of wiggle room, uh, maybe for a few seconds to move things around. With the masking tape, you do not. So if you are using that to cut or to put on your acrylic before you cut, make sure you're also scoring the bottom piece so that you can easily set it on there. It's permanent, it stays in place, it's gonna hold up really well. I wanna to quickly touch on where to find designs when you're creating acrylic projects. If you are a small business owner, you're probably creating your own custom designs to put out into the world. If you are just playing around and you're looking for some stuff to cut, you can head over to Creative Fabrica. They have some amazing SVG files. SVG is what you wanna look for when you are cutting things with your laser. I just did a video on all about laser design files. You can find that video up here and take a look at that if you want more information on laser files. So I've shared some of my tips that I use when uh, cutting, layering, and masking acrylic. Um, I wanna talk about some of the most common issues I hear in laser groups, in the laser community, about creating acrylic projects. 
the number one issue that people bring up is in my diode laser groups. When people come into the groups, they just got, let's say their X-Tool M1, they're so excited and they don't understand why it doesn't cut white or clear acrylic. Really, really do your homework. And if you want to cut all types of acrylic, so clear, glitter, patterned, pastel, opaque, cast, whatever, if you wanna do it all, a diode laser is probably not right for you. Make sure you have the right laser for the job you intend to do. A CO2 laser like the P2S is ideal for cutting all types of acrylic. The second issue I see often is my laser, my acrylic is melting or I'm getting really jagged edges and that's usually attributed to incorrect settings. So if you are using an X tool like the P2S and you go into their software, you're gonna be able to choose the material that you're using. So you could choose black gloss, glossy acrylic or white or glitter or clear or whatever it is. And X tool is going to recommend some settings. I typically cut acrylic with this machine at 80% power and 20 speed. That is what works for me. I keep a running list of my settings and some types of acrylic require different settings. So my advice is to look at those recommended settings that Xtool or Glowforge or WeCreate gives you, but then run your own test grid. If you wanna know how to run a test grid, I have a video on that. Super easy to do, run it in the corner of your acrylic and you are gonna save a lot of time and money by not wasting material down the road. The final issue is from people who have been lasering for a long time. These machines need to be maintained, cleaned, and sometimes recalibrated, especially if you use them often. So refer to your machine's manual or video guide or community group to understand how to keep these clean. That can mean cleaning the base plate, which should be done after every project, cleaning out the fans so the filters are clear, and then sometimes actually recalibrating the laser in the mirrors because they can shift over time. Those are my tips for working with acrylic. It is one of my favorite mediums to work with. I love all the colors and textures you can find, and it just has this really clean and fresh look when you create signs, jewelry, and home decor. If you are looking to work with acrylic and you don't yet have a laser, I highly, highly recommend the P2S or any CO2 laser. You can find more videos on this machine down in the description. If you are a laser crafter, consider subscribing. I am here every week with new videos to help you move forward in your creative journey. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.